You know, sometimes I wrestle with uh, technology because, you know, I use a drill driver. It's a wonderful tool. But sometimes I worry because we just use those all the time when, in fact, there is proven technology that's still as viable for us today as woodworkers as it was 100 years ago, 70 years ago, 50 years ago. I bought my first brace and bit when I was 15, 15 and a half, 16 years old. And I've been using it ever, ever since because it's such a practical tool and it's at human speed. That's the important thing sometimes. You drive a drill driver, you're working on a veneered surface, you're drilling a hole through it, boom, something triggered the mechanism faster than you wanted to go and all of a sudden you've ripped into that surface. So with a hand brace, you very, very rarely would ever, ever do such a thing. I'm gonna take the the bit out, I picked the biggest bit because you'll see the most because of its size, but these go up in 1 16th increments from quarter of an inch all the way up to one inch. So I've got the variance that I need for most of my work. Woodworking, we don't usually work to the same tolerances. Say an engineer might want to work to thousandths of an inch. We don't usually do that. So a one inch bit, and this is my brace. This is very standard. It's got a ratchet on it so I can go forward and reverse. I'm taking it apart so that you can see what happens with this bit when I pull this jaw out of the shell. We call this the shell. You can call it a chuck if you want to. When we take the, the, the uh, end of the bit and place it inside this crocodile jaw and we squeeze this together, which is what happens inside the chuck, it locks the uh, four-sided tang into the two V grooves on either side and it's very successful in that union between those two components. It really locks it nicely. Let's put this back together. The best way to put this back together, slide it into that channel, take the shell, place it over and slide it up until the threads engage and then just turn it. When we put this into the, the uh, shell itself, when we're locking this in place, just house it in and then keep turning this and it'll self-center inside the shell. And now those V's are locked on either side of that tang and we've got the perfect union. It's now ready for boring the holes. So what do we need to know about the other moving parts? This is the uh, ratchet mechanism. If I turn this to here, I can go in one direction. Why do we need a ratchet? Because sometimes we're inside a cabinet, inside a cupboard, underneath some stairs, in between jaws, uh, joists, and we want to take this so we come up against a hard wall, we can rotate this this way. We get so far, we find we've got to reverse it. We turn this threaded, this uh, knurled part here, and we can back the thread out like this. Sometimes we might just want it locked in the permanent, no, no ratchet position. That's what we've got there now. So it's great. This rotates, it's wonderful. If it doesn't rotate, it causes blisters on your hand. This pad can go in your belly like this and you can press that way or you can use the hand pad and just turn it this way depending on whether you're whoops, left-handed or right-handed. So let's see this beast in action. I'm going to put this in the vise this way just so you can see what's happening. It's not typical. Normally, I would put this in the vise this way, take the brace, press my belly in against the pad and then start rotating this way. That means that I can move the, the brace with my body weight, but also we shouldn't forget, right on the very tip of this brace, we've got this snail here. We call it the snail, and it's got a threaded conical shape that actually works to pull itself into the wood. Those threads are 1 16th apart. For every rotation, this brace goes into the wood 1 16th, and that includes when we actually start cutting the wood uh, for the hole. So let me show you this way. Put it in the vise this way so you can see. This may not be typical, but it's not all that unusual either because sometimes when we're working on a project, we can't move the project and we have to bore this way. So this goes onto the hole start here. Watch when I turn this. So I'm going to count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I'm just starting to cut the rim of the hole. So if I do a full rotation now and then back this out, 
I've got a knife wall, a circular knife wall cut by the, the two outside edges. On the bit, I've got these half moon shapes here. They cut that rim, so these are filed and honed and sharpened. So this pulls it into the, uh, into the uh, hole. These cut the rim of the hole, and then right on the inside, when this is engaging to the surface of the wood, this raker here and this raker, they pull in, they are cutting the surface of the wood now with the spurs on each side removing, uh, defining the hole. So I go through here like this, and then I feel on the underside until the point comes through, back out, and there I've got a nice hole without any tear out on the edge of the hole, flip over, put it into the vise this way, and then this lines it up, tighten this up. This lines it up perfectly with the opposite side. What a, what a remarkable tool it is. Still very usable, very functional. And there I've got no tear out on this side of the hole and I've got no tear out on this side of the hole. It's a very neat tool. So we learn how to sharpen the bits you can keep sharpening them for the rest of their life, uh, which will be 50, 70, 80 years if you take care of them. Okay, let's take this out. So we've got this full range of bits. We've got all the sizes we need. There are times, when would I choose to use a drill driver uh, as opposed to the brace and bit? I would say usually I use a, a drill driver, the electric battery driven drill driver, any, any size from zero on up to a quarter of an inch, maybe three-eighths of an inch. After that, I would probably use the bits because I feel like I have total control. This is an adapter. This is a wonderful piece of kit. You buy the adapter and you can house into that. You can house into that a, a countersink bit. You can count, put a, a, um, a, drill, a, a bit driver for driving the screws. This is unusual. This is a, a slot head um, driver bit that will go directly into the shell there. So that's a great tool. And then this one, this is not meant for this tool at all. This is the uh, sleeve comes over here. So if I want to drive a screw like this one, I can put the bit in here, the screw in there. And then slide this up wherever I'm going to position that screw, just keep turning like this. Now I'm going to turn this so you can see again. Let me pull that off. Now I'm not very square, but it won't matter for this uh, demonstration there. So slide that down and just keep going until it seats. There, it's seated flush. So that's all that one does. So this is adapting modern technology to work with vintage technology, if you like. So that's what I would do with that. What about one or two of the other bits? I've got some shell bits here. These are shell bits. And these fit directly into the, into the brace. So this uh, square tang with the taper goes on like that. I love this piece of equipment because watch this, I can go in here and that starts my hole. I can just go all the way through in 10 turns, I will be through this three quarter inch piece of wood. But one of the nice things about it, this was a chair maker's bit really, you can then alter the angle. So if you've got spindles going in your chair, you've got rails going across and they've got angles to them, you can go through just like this and this is the simplest of all the bits, I think. This is forged by a blacksmith. And we keep going. I need a little bit more oomph here. There we go. So I've got the, the whole board. Let me just push this through. It's come through on the opposite side. It's a very nice piece of kit. Nice if you're a chair maker. Still just as functional. So here you have the brace the bits, the variations of bits that are just as functional today to enhance your woodworking. And I don't think they should ever be abandoned. And the reason I'm giving you this demonstration is so that you'll get a hold of this 
and it will be perpetuated ad infinitum until the next generation and the next generation because they are, they are perfectly functional, they work really well. Thank you.